Welcome to the Leaderonomic Show. I'm Audrey Tong. In this episode, we have HR guru Dave Ulrich, who is the Rancis Likert Professor at the Ross School of Business at the University of Michigan. He is also a partner of the RBL Group. He focuses on helping organizations and leaders deliver value through HR transformation and best practices in the workplace. Join us in this episode with Roshan Thiran as we explore the world of HR management. Welcome to the Leanonomic Show. I'm with Professor Dave Alrich from the Ross School of Business in Michigan. Yes. Dave, welcome to the show. Glad to have you with us. Thank you, Roshan. Great to be here. Tell us a bit about yourself. I mean, how did you end up uh, in this space, uh, specifically in the space of exploring HR and, uh, and, and being an expert in this space somewhat? I've had a privilege of having a great career. I'm curious about how organizations and people think and act. Mm -hmm. And I'm especially about how they think and act in ways that create value for others. The minute you get in that space, you get into the HR systems, okay. how we hire, train, and pay people, how we create a culture, how we lead. Those are the systems that shape how organizations think and act. What, what drove that curiosity? I mean, did, did um, just you something know, it's a great figured... question. What drove your curiosity to be a reporter? I don't know. It's just curiosity of curiosity, I guess. Well, mine is it's curiosity of curiosity as well. Um, I had great parents who were very good at systems and organization. I actually was on my way to law school. And somebody advised me to take a course from a professor. And he challenged me to look at the organizations where I lived, where I worked, where I played, where I worshipped, and to think about them. And I changed. Mm. And so I started, I was majoring in English, I'll just tell one oh, quick story, okay, sure. to go to law school. And so I started writing papers about the people in literature and their organizational implications. I wrote a paper from uh, Paradise Lost, a great play. And in chapter two, it was uh, Satan in hell and his use of organization to change people. King Lear in Shakespeare, how he influenced people. I remember calling my mother and my father and saying, I'm not gonna go to law school. I'm gonna study OB. Okay. And my mother thought it was obstetrics and she thought I'd become a doctor. And I said, OB is organizational behavior. And she said, what's that? And I said, I don't know, but it fascinates me to look at organizations. And, and what, what, what has evolved in HR today? I mean, you've been in this space for many, many years, right? It's a great space. Yeah. HR is, is not about HR. HR is about helping the business win. I think HR begin with all the tools, hiring, training, yeah. compensation, benefits, communication. Now we put those tools together in solutions to help organizations have the right talent, the right leadership, the right capability to win in their marketplace. And so HR is not doing HR work it's creating the outcomes of HR. Okay, and has that really, that evolution really taken place? Uh, or it's something that's in progression? Not totally. Okay. Um, I mean, I think every evolution has a history. Uh, great actors, um, you still see their legacy and they have a hard time overcoming it. Sometimes HR has a hard time overcoming its legacy. People still see HR as the, legacy, the policy, the, the police, the administrators, the policy people. It's getting broken, but it takes a while to overcome but, but how does HR evolve into that space? I mean, what, what is that re really the role of HR? Um, it's a good question. It evolves into that space, bec not because of HR people, business leaders. A business leader says, I have a strategy. I have a set of goals to serve customers and win in the marketplace. What do I need to do to make that happen? And that's where HR can begin to be helpful. Okay. And what may be some examples of how they go about doing this? Name a company you admire. Google. Google. Laszlo Block at Google is a great HR person. He says, for Google to be successful, we have to innovate. We have to do new things. That's our definition of success. So as the head of HR with the business team, he says, I want employees to take about 20% of their time and do creative things. Innovate. Try things that weren't done before. Mm -hmm. The other thing Google does is they create pockets of innovation. They create organizational structures where you don't have to be perfect. You can experiment. You can try new things. Yep. Yeah. And is that what you mean by inside or outside in HR? Absolutely. That outside in HR says, how do we position ourselves in the marketplace to win? Google says, I want to win through innovation. Amazon wants to win through discipline. So they build different HR systems 
against those external promises. Mm. And, and, and tell us a bit about this outside in HR. I mean, I mean, it's a new book that you've also come yeah. up with, right? What, 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 tell us, tell us some, some insights. It's, it's really simple. In HR, we would often say we want to be the employer of choice. Okay. That sounds wonderful. But you don't want to be the employer of choice unless those are the employees customers would choose. So if you're not making the customer the criteria, we're choosing the wrong people. We don't want to just build on your strengths. You have many strengths. We want to build on your strengths that will solve customers' problems. Good service is not that I smile at you, it's that you smile back at me. And it's that outside in that we try to win. Right, and, and, and I know you advocate that HR should also be involved in cus being customer focused. H how does that work? I mean, what, how, how can HR do that? Very simple. If you have a visit with customers, have HR go with you. The visit is not an event. If you're a customer, I, I don't just sell you a product. What I want to do is build a relationship with you. So if I'm in HR, I look at you and say, thank you for buying our product. In the next 10 years, you're going to spend 100, whatever unit, on our products. We would like you to spend most of that with us. So we're going to hire people who meet your needs. We're going to train people who meet your needs. We're going to pay people to do what you want. We're going to build a structure. Everything we do in HR is designed to build a structure and a system to serve you well. Mm. So HR almost has, I mean, it's, it's HR becoming really a business leader, essentially. Absolutely, we, you know, whatever metaphor you want, yeah. partner, leader, advocate, right. but HR is part of the business equation. Mm. And that's how they can come to the table to some extent. Uh, getting to the table is not hard. In fact, I would argue if you're an HR person and you're not invited, not invited to the business table, you should get out of HR. Go to finance, it doesn't take anything to do that get out of HR, but when you're at the table, what do you say? And you don't say, we should do 40 hours of training, we should have a career plan. You talk about the business results that you will help deliver. Mm, okay, and, and you know, speaking about finance, I mean, one of the things you came up with was this whole leadership capital index. Yeah. Um, and you know, usually it's about financials or some of the intangibles like strategy and so on and so forth. What's the leadership capital index? It's and, a very simple comment. Think of a, a pyramid. At the top of the pyramid is financial performance. Yep. Every firm has to perform well. Underneath that is what drives a performance. That's called intangibles. Yep. Strategy, brand, R&D, <coughs> budgeting. What's underneath those intangibles? We think it's leadership. Because leaders make decisions about strategy, budgeting, brand, research. And if you can build better leadership, they'll create intangibles who will deliver financial results, who will give confidence to the marketplace. Mm. And HR's role in driving this leadership index, what would that be? Hopefully, the index is not for HR people, it's for investors, right. and it's for the senior business leaders. HR should provide the knowledge to get you a better score. Okay, okay. And, and you know, one of the things I think HR struggles with in many companies is this whole performance ma uh, appraisal piece where it's one of the biggest challenges of HR. And there, there are many companies say, look, let's eliminate it, let's extend it, let's try this model, and so on and so forth. What's your take on this? When was your last performance appraisal? Oh, a couple of months ago, I guess. Was it good or bad? It was okay. Why? We, By the way, that we changed survived. the interview. <laughs> now, here's yeah. the point. The appraisal traditionally is about forms. You get a number, you get a rating, you get a ranking. That's not a good appraisal. The appraisal was good or bad because of the conversation you had with your boss. Bosses have to do conversations. My wife often says, she's a psychologist, the loudest feedback a parent gives a child is none. So if the child makes a mistake and the parent doesn't say anything, the child assumes it's okay. If an employee makes a mistake and the boss doesn't say anything, the employee assumes it's okay. You have as a boss a duty to have a conversation, but it should be a positive one. Okay. That's where we see appraisal and, headed. And what's HR's role in that? They have to educate bosses or they Absolutely. have to create structures? Some bosses don't want to do it mm -hmm. or they don't know how to do it. Yep. If they don't want to do it and won't do it, they shouldn't be a boss. They need training, they need coaching, they need role playing to have a positive conversation with their employees. Okay, so really HR has to build that structure and, and that whole policy. Okay, what, what, what do you see as the future of HR? Um, bigger and smaller. Okay. The administrative things get smaller. Uh, your payroll, your benefits, your health care, those become put on technology, they become a platform, they become self-reliance. The bigger things, become delivering talent to the organization, delivering leadership to the organization, and delivering culture and capability. When HR can deliver those outcomes, talent, leadership, and culture, they help companies win. Mm. 
Now, if I'm a young HR person just starting out my career right after university, um, what advice would you give me? Stick with it. Okay. Learn. Become very good at starting not with HR but with the business. Listen to what the business needs. Find out what the business requires. And then show how your work will help the business be successful. By the way, I often live this. Our son has chosen to go into HR. I'm proud of him. Not because of me. I feel that's bad because I cast, I'm large. I cast a large shadow. But I think he can create his own place because he believes also that by managing HR and organizations, companies win and people win. But uh, so, I mean, do you advocate them not starting in HR or starting in the business? I don't oh. care. If you start in HR, you have to learn the business. If you start in the business, you have to learn HR. And so it's a virtuous cycle wherever you want to start. Yeah. And how does somebody learn about the business? I mean, how, do, how does an HR professional learn? How did you learn about your business? Uh, by being in it, running it. That's it. You be in it, you run it, you see the business. You may take a course to get... Uh, I think what courses often do is give you a language and frameworks and, and research. And then you've got to go experience it. Okay. Now, if I'm a HR director of a big organization, um, what nuggets of wisdom would you impart to me? Oh, it's hard to do that in a short time. Um, here's what I'd say. Number one, get to know the business. Become what we call a strategic positioner. Number two, be a credible activist. Be trusted. Be activist. Have a point of view. Number three in our research is navigate paradox. Every business has tension. Long term, short term, top down, bottom up, inside, outside. Learn to navigate those tensions. And when you do that, you end up helping the business be successful. Okay, great. And my final question, if I am a CEO of a business and uh, you, you're addressing a group of CEOs, what advice would you impart to them? Pay your HR people more. Okay. <laughs> no, that's, that's a joke. Um, you know, the CEO challenges are so complex. I, I coach CEOs, I've worked with CEOs. What a hard job. Yeah. Be willing to take help from your advisors. Finance people can give you great advice on economics and finance and discipline. Technology people shouldn't advise on technology. They should be advising on information. And your HR people should be giving you great advice on talent, leadership, and culture. Mm -hmm. Listen to their advice. You're still the owner. You're responsible. You're accountable. But take input from those with you. Okay. And, and if I flip it to the HR person dealing with the CEO, what sort of you know, how do they influence, how do they, how do they get their input to, to the CEO? Number one is credible, at build trust, be a relationship builder, listen to your CEO, be somebody they can trust, take confidence, solve their problems. Number two, be an activist, come with a point of view around talent, leadership and culture so that you can give them insights they don't have. Okay. I'm going to ask you a question. Sure. What was the best HR experience you've had in your career? Where HR, had, where HR had an influence. Something helped your career be successful. Uh, I, I think it's probably when uh, I was at a point in time I was running a business and uh, I felt that I needed to quit and take a sabbatical. Uh -huh. And I had a conversation with a very senior HR leader at General Electric who, who uh, spent time with me to say, look, this happens. Uh, you know, you, you, you get frustrated, but um, you, know, you have to stay you know, firm on the track. You know, take a break, but you know, get, get back okay. on. So. What a wonderful story. You know, General Electric is one of two or three companies that has good HR people. By the way, your story touches me because one of the keys of HR is they care about people. And if you need to take a break, take a break, but come back. Don't go to Malaysia and do TV, no. <laughs> but, but, but let us help you as a person. And that's the other thing that draws me to HR is we are a field that cares about the people and what's right for them. Okay, great. And I mean, the, the one, one last thing that intrigues me is HR owns culture. I mean, to some extent, a lot of CEOs say, hey, HR, culture is your problem, you know, get it done, you know, fix it, or whatever, whatever they imply. How, how does HR take ownership of culture and, and drive results? I would change it a little bit. I think the CEO owns culture, because I think HR is the architect of culture. At General Electric, under Jack Welch, yeah. he wanted to drive a culture around speed, simplicity, and self-confidence. Jeff Immel comes in and wants to drive a culture around innovation and imagination. Yeah. Then HR builds the blueprint for how to make that happen. So HR is the architect and the, That's it, the, uh, architect. the executioner of that, yeah, that yeah. builder. Well, Dave, thank you so much for being with what us. What a it's great a set of questions. Session. You've done great homework. <laughs> and may you someday return to GE. Oh, hopefully. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> We've been speaking to uh, Dave Alrich here on the Leadernomics Show.